recipient of the Wade jersey, should there be one, remains a mystery. Benny the Bull seems ready to swap. Or he may know that I'm coming in Wednesday. He just wants to hold on to that one. He was, I assume he was watching. Seems way more likely to me, Coach. I agree. Rather than Benny the Bull. You're going to be in, you're going to be, uh, where are you going to be Wednesday? You're going to be in Miami. In Miami. With the Clippers. Yep. Okay. This could happen. Clipper Miami happen. game. We need to make this happen. Should it be? What would you I give him, by the way? A, what jersey would you have to yeah, offer? Yeah, whose jersey? I wouldn't. I, you know what I would give him? I would give him because, you know, he has Dwayne, he has Wade wine. You know that? I did not know that. Yeah, uh, every he, every he, NBA player has his has, own wine has now. His so own I, bottle of wine. It's sure. called Wade something. I forgot something. But anyhow, I'll exchange a bottle of wine with him for a bottle of Fratelli. And then Wade for Fratelli. Sure. That's that's like a two for one. And now. Wait, this just in. They, they have. Clearly omitted an important element of that resume, and that's Benny the Bulls jersey, which he now possesses. We just saw that. That happened. So, yeah, championship, sure, gold medal, yeah, all-star appearances. Married to Gabrielle Union. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, nice. yeah, whatever. It's all nice. He's got Benny the Bulls jersey. They've also got the seventh spot in the Eastern Conference at the moment at 22 and 22. And if you're an NBA fan, and presumably you are because you're watching, you want to see Dwayne Wade in the playoffs one more time, right? And, of course. And have a couple of moments. And isn't it right that he should be back in Miami to finish out his career uh, after all the great years there and, you know, the championships he was able to bring to them? And here he goes out. And uh, I, I think you have to make a decision. Is this the right way to do it? Doing the jersey presentation every night? Is there something else I could have done? Should other teams be doing something for him? when he's in the buildings to say goodbye for the last time. He could come up with a bunch of ideas, I'm sure. You know, the thing for me that was hard about watching that, I understand his time with the Bulls organization was not spectacular. And there was some malice there at times, sure. I think. You're talking about a guy who's a native of the city of Chicago, who was at one time a Jordan brand ambassador. So as I was campaigning for John Collins to be in the dunk contest, which I don't think is going to happen, I'm also going to campaign for when Dwayne Wade is in this All-Star game, Let's have Michael Jordan give Dwayne Wade a signed Bulls jersey to take care of the mm. Chicago side of this. Oh, that'd be cool. That's I think that's idea. the only way a native I like that. Chicago, a son of Chicago, should be sent out of that. That side. player might be. Maybe he feels his most loyalty as a young child growing up in Chicago watching Benny the Bull for all those years. <laughs> that's, that's the guy that it should go to. Benny the Bull. Yeah. Get the hoof print. I'm telling you, get the hoof print. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Uh, he's but, get... but, but seriously, though, think about this. It's a really meaningful thing that he's playing his last game in Chicago. Absolutely. And it, this is something I think for him you could tell there was a lot of emotion in this. Mm -hmm. I don't think every time he's met with Jason Jackson post game has been quite as emotional for him, having as many family members there as he did, et cetera. And Miami is in the playoff picture. They were before they won tonight. They're very solidly in the playoff race right now. And I think this is – sort of building momentum now, heading to All-Star break. Very likely Dwayne is an All-Star in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing Miami trying to make a run. So it'll be interesting to see if they are buyers in any way or if they're trying to offload money as they go down the stretch. Right. They're in a very difficult salary cap spot. Unfortunately, we're going to be waiting until the last week to find out if they're in because I think the entire remainder of the season, Miami's going to be in, Miami's going to be out. And they can't keep all their players healthy. Right. It's one of the biggest problems. I would think that's true if there was someone behind them that was definitely going to be ascending quickly. I think when I look at the Wizards, I think the Wizards are a playoff team. But there may be two or three teams ahead of Miami that's not, that aren't necessarily solid either. So I agree with you. I think it'll be touch and go. But I don't think it's so much that anybody's going to be nipping on their heels necessarily either. Can the Nets sustain what they've been doing uh, will the magic surge again? A bunch of questions to be answered here over the next few months in terms of who's going to be those six, seven, eight spots in the Eastern Conference. Final game of the night is... One, two, three, four, five, six, boogie! Come to the rack! How serious was that move? One, two, three, four, five, six, boogie! Man, oh man, I can take a few more of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, boogie! And Boogie hammers it on the run! Well time. You watch Demarcus Cousins play. You see all the talent. You see the numbers. Not too many big guys at his size. Is that agile? That mobile can shoot the three, put the ball on the floor, get to the basket. He could be 
the best big man in the NBA. He got so much physical talent. Boogie for three. Unbelievable. Left going to the rim and dunked it on a wind-up right-hand finish. And DeMarcus Cousins can't go. Oh, He's holding that left lower leg area in the area of his Achilles. It's one of the most unique free agent situations we've seen in a lot of years. I'm a warrior. In gigantic news, DeMarcus Cousins has agreed to a one-year, $5.3 million deal with the defending champion Golden State Warriors. No drop the me to the ground, cause it's going down, undefeated. Apparently nobody else wanted DeMarcus Cousins. He didn't get one single offer. Well, my main goal is to win a championship. That's, that's what I'm signing up for. When the injury happened, he's getting ready to sign a max, near max contract. Think about that. Look at the work Boogie has put in just to come back. Mm -hmm. Think about the work ethic it takes to get all the way back physically from where he was. I'm improving each and every day. I'm getting strong each and every day. And, you know, just a matter of time before I'm back on the floor. Uh, we're, we're definitely excited to have him. And he's been working hard. It's been a long year for him. I'm looking forward to just seeing him out on the floor, just doing something that he loves again. Shoot, you can space the floor, you can do it all. He's a monster on the boards, he's gonna be great. It'll be a lot of emotion, honestly. You know? I don't think anybody could ever really understand this, and I don't really expect them to, unless they've, you know, they've experienced themselves. This is something that other teams have never had to worry about with Golden State. They can now actually produce offense from the inside out with a true big. Maybe Boogie is the wrinkle in the injection of energy that this Warriors team is really looking for for this season. I'm excited to see what we look like when once DeMarcus gets his feet underneath him. We got a chance to be really good. Undefeated. Well, Boogie certainly gave us a lot to talk about in his first 14 minutes for the Golden State Warriors on Friday. Four-time All-Star, scored the first two points of his first game, and then DeMarcus Cousins ended up with 14 points, hitting three of his four three-pointers. 3D, it looks like that moniker of Splash Cousins. <laughs> it's going to stick, especially after those open looks he got in his first game. How is he so wide open? Well, he's playing with great players and obviously playing with three flame, flame, flame throwers because <laughs> it's going to create so much space. So I think he may take a few games to get used to that, to have three guys on the floor that any given night they can go for 40 or yeah. 50. And on the flip side of that, they're willing to share the basketball. He has to get used to so many guys willing to give him the ball. So when you watch some of these plays, first play of the game, you talk about the dunk. Well, it's because Kevin Durant has the basketball. He comes off the screen. You have to. Gortat has to honor Kevin Durant. He gets the easy dunk. You look at the bench. Everyone's applauding. Now you throw him in the mid post. Look at the patience. He's never had a Steph Curry or a Clay Thompson on the floor at the same time. You have to honor them. Easy layup. So now you're saying flow of the game, great spacing, play good defense, contest a shot. Now, wait a minute. Big Cuz, he's out run. Bumps into a defender, keeps running, and Kevin Durant once again, unselfish, the perfect bounce pass booze. I think because once he gets into basketball shape, mm -hmm. you know this, yeah. he's going to have so much fun, less pressure, because you heard Igor Dollar at the end of the game, man, keep shooting. He's like, I don't want to shoot too much. Mm -hmm. I've never been in a situation like this. I think he's going to have a lot of fun this year. Yeah, absolutely. He's playing with great, great players around him, all Hall of Famers, great coaching staff. They want you to have success. They feed you into that environment. Like you said, Eagle Dell after the game was saying, we want you to shoot more. You're going to be open a lot because you're playing with three guys that are averaging over 20 points a game, playing very well. I think, as you said, as he gets in better basketball shape, he could have some big numbers with that team. That's yeah, going to be fun. Well, we're out here. The guy with the ball, he leads, he leads the way. Yeah. It's on, your hold turn. On. Hold on now. Who I get to be? You get to be Steph Curry. Ooh. Get the shot. Huh? Here we go. Now, if you shoot, you got to make it. I'm going to be KD, you know, DMV. You're going to be Boogie. I'll be Boogie. Right, a lot, a lot of pressure play. here, 3D. So the first play, Kevin Durant has the basketball, and he's pointing at Cuz. Now, look at the spacing. You got Steph Curry over there. You got Klay Thompson over there. So the whole middle of the floor is wide open. So now he's telling him to come. He sets the screen out here. He turns. Now, because it's Kevin Durant, you saw they have to honor this simple bounce pass. Now he gets all the way to the rim, and he stretches out for the dunk. Now we're going to go to that second play we saw. I'm going to be Klay Thompson now, and you're going to be Steph Curry at the top of the key area. So once again, we talk about player movement, ball movement. That's normally Draymond Green. So now Klay comes down, hits the ball. We call this a hold. 
Why are we hold? Because all that area is down there. Now I'm gonna run over here and be Draymond Green. Now I'm gonna set this screen. Now this Steph Curry coming off for an easy layup. You have to honor that. All right. Now the last play, we're gonna shoot. I'm gonna be Clay Thompson again. You're gonna pop out. Now I'm hitting. We're cutting. I'm coming over here. I'm Clay. Now you're cutting to the basket. Now you pop back. Now you're wide open for the shot. And I think that's the part last night Cousins was talking about. I'm going to have so much ISOs or one-on-ones on the weak side of the floor because of all the cutting and all the team being so unselfish. Yep, and for Boogie, when he was in Sacramento, he was the guy. And in New Orleans, it was Boogie 80. Maybe you consider Drew Holiday oh, yeah. as that similar threat. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in Golden State, Steph Curry is a threat when he comes past half court. Same thing with Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant. So there's more floor spacing for DeMarcus Cousins. He's going to adjust to that quickly. Oh, it's going to be great for him. He's going to have so much room to operate. You got shooters spreading the whole floor out. Everybody's at the three-point line. So when he gets the ball on the, on the box right here, he can go one-on-one. -on -one. Then who's going to double off of? Right. Maybe Draymond. So, so, no, hold on. Stay there. So you, you be Steph at the top. I'm going to be Clay. You go a little deeper in the post. Yeah. And I, now, if it's KD or if it's Clay or if it's Steph, we call it hit and hold or you stay or you hit and cut. Where are you doubling from? You're going to double off Clay, 14 threes. You're going to double off of Steph, 13 threes. You're going to double off KD. I think he's made nine or ten threes in the game. Yeah. So this is what, think about this for a second. The Golden State Warriors have never had this. Whew. Think about this for a second. They've already won three championships, but they never had a guy that they could throw the ball into the post and guys just space out and wait and you pick your poison where you're going to double team from. And they've also never had a stretch five. What we mean nope. by that is he had three three-pointers in the game. Yep. The Golden State Warriors, in this run that they've had, they've never had a center hit three three-pointers in the entire time that they've <laughs> played with a team. They, it's never happened. Never so happened. from that point of view, that they're a threat offensively, defensively. Boogie fouled out, yeah. but you yeah. like that effort from him. Yeah, that, that's part of that's just getting back in basketball shape. You know, he hasn't been playing against live bodies in over a year. So he's going to be a little bit behind, a little step slow. His leg's going to feel a little bit more today than they did yesterday. But once he gets back in basketball shape, like 3D keeps talking about, those fouls will go down and down and down. And uh, he's going to have a lot of success. No, I, it's, it's just fun, man. It's when you have five guys on the floor thinking the same way, share. He has a better shot. I have a good shot. My teammate has a better shot. Move without the basketball. Help the helper. All those phrases we use every night. He's finally on the franchise and the team that everyone's on the same page. And they're trying to win another championship. Two in a row. Golden State Warriors looking for that third boogie. Looks like he's going to be a big piece of that. Victor Oladipo had his all-NBA breakout season last year. This year, the Pacers remain near the top of the Eastern Conference standings. We'll hear from Indiana's best player next.